Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. This time about how to underwind. This video is to teach the capabilities of the underwinding game, the best way to drive it on various maps, how it performs in tests, the driving style of it, how fast it can be, and every single important detail about it. So let's begin the video. But first, a disclaimer. This video is a continuation of AG Barrett series on how to. All of the tests I've done by myself and this is where I get my information from. In the description there will be links to every single video I'm working on this car. This isn't meant to be a copycat video. And there is a link for my Discord server in the description and comments. The Honda NSXR N81, one of the most desirable cars in MRT and one of the best beginner cars you can own. This car costs 3.892 million yen or 33,000 US dollars. This car was the main competition of the Ferrari Testa Rosa back in the day, which means it is one of the best cars in game as well, due to how close it could actually compete with it. This car has a 5 speed manual transmission, although you can make it into an auto or semi auto in game. However, it is not recommended. This car also uses a layout that is MR, which means mid engine rear wheel drive, which lets it have the most amount of traction possible, although it adds some instability. This car also has some of the best kits in game. You can make it look pretty nice if you wanted to, and it has a lot of things it can actually do, due to how the tune is actually set up. This car has 276 bhp, it accelerates from 0 to 104.9 seconds in game, or 5.45 seconds in real life. This car also has 294 mm of torque or 217 lb per feet. This car also has a 294kbh top speed in MRT due to its gear ratios or 270 in real life. It is also one of the lightweight cars because of how little it weights, being at 1285kg. It also can pack a punch with its engine, being a known aspiration P6 with a 3.0 liter capacity, which lets it have a great sound. So I did quite a few tests on the N1 to see how good it could be, one of them being the acceleration test, in which it did fairly well from 0 to 200 kmh, however became slow in the 200 to 250 region. It did a 4.92 0 to 100 kmh and a 12.68 seconds in a 0 to 200 kmh, however it would take over 9 seconds to reach 250. The key takeaways are that it is a snail in a straight line, but it has decent axle to back it up. In the top speed test, it can hold 268 on its own power. It can also hold 272, but to reach it needs a little bit of help from gravity. And it has a decent gear ratio to be used. As you can see in C1, it would take a while to reach 294, due to the little amount of power it had. This car had some really great brakes, which meant that P brake didn't need to be relied on. I also attempted drifting this car just to see what would happen, and the results are that it isn't very good to do the layout. While the layout may help it creep even better during the races, it won't let it drift because there's not enough weight at the front to keep it planted, which means it would just spin on its own axis. So it is it has much of a low creep to be in control while drifting, however it can work under the right circumstances, although it's a very slim chance. However something else that involves some sort of drifting is rallying, and in this part the anyone didn't fail, because it's actually fun on it and it has enough traction at the front due to the third person's eyes road surface. First map, Shirakawa. So I managed to clock the best time on the N1 just because nobody else has doing it. 
However, this is the best map to explain the driving style of the anyone can feel quite slidey and not creepy enough at those speeds. However, if you can really keep the control of it, you can see the amount of potential it actually has. However, at high speeds the car can feel like hits on rails. But don't let that fool you because it doesn't react well to bombs and can kill you at any time. Match my strength limits to your advantage in this map because the anyone will kill you every time it can. Even there I almost slid off the track and into a rock. I barely managed to catch onto it and keep the car in control. To be actually fast on this map with this car, you need to be focused at all times, else it will slip away from your control and end up in the edge. Because of the MR layout of this car and the amount of inclines this small path has, and besides the width of the road, it's actually quite of the hardest cars you could say on this map to do a really good time in. However, you see strong brakes and it's cornering to your attention and to your fast time because this is the best part about the car. So, in resume, use your brakes and let off, go flat out if possible to remove the bombs capability of killing you, match my strategy between a corner of war, beware of bombs and curves, and stay focused on it. Use throttle control and P braking to slow down and faster and beware of your spin on corner of Second map, C1 Loop 9. Now, C1, I managed to go 4 times off the world record due to how hard it actually is to keep the current control in C1. Even though it can feel its own race on C1, the bombs are an asteroid. However, you can take nearly, of, nearly all of S1 flat out just due to how broken the handling on it is, until you hit a bomb of course. The best way to keep control of the enemy one is to not do any sudden movements and use some sort of line that doesn't have any bombs. Use force to cut your speed during braking zones and the immediately shift up to first, because that's where most of the torque is. So if you can stick on first as long as possible and only use force to cut a little bit of speed and focus on your corner speed and entry, not the speed of the straights. Because what this car really is good on and what it teaches you about one is how to take the corners nearly flat out and how to avoid bombs again. Also, you have to watch out for run ending bombs, as this can happen quite often. I lost quite a lot of good runs on the any one just because of this reason. It can also wheel spin on certain inclines. So, in resume, don't use speed brake at all costs on this map, LC to kill you, rely on your cornering speed instead of sideline speeds. It can feel like it's on rate, but don't go overconfident. This car has too stiff of a suspension to support bombs, so be careful, and you need throttle control to use it. Third map, Mount Otsuki. Now, I managed to clock a time on Otsuki far away from the world record in 5 seconds and because I hadn't learned enough on it, most of my advice may not be good here. However, from my own experience what I can tell you is, you don't really need to use speed brakes, so this actually can be a good car if you don't know how to use it. However, if you're on KB, you're going to have a hard time with it because of the amount of wheel spin it has on the exits. Although you can still use speed brake if you want to cut a little bit of speed. It is recommendable if you're actually going for a fast time instead of the 258. Now, you need a lot of steering control and a lot of throttle control, just as every other map to do how bad the car can be on certain exits. It actually is great when it doesn't oversteer, however that's a bit of a rare occurrence on most of the time. The best way to use it is having a controller or maybe even a mouse to do the control in the steering. However, it is highly unstable in low gears and when in low RPM. The best RPM to keep at is between 7000 and 8000, else it will slip away. Throttle control is key, the brake is necessary for a good time, however not required. Fifth is only on the first straight, never on fourth, and it's highly unstable and higher RPM, more grip on Otsuki. 
and it also works like this. You need to push it to a limit. Fourth map, classic token. I have a little bit more experience on Classic Tokyo and Otsuki and especially on this card. Now, did anyone on Classic Tokyo just feels planted? It feels like it's actually at its habitat. And it is actually quite fast on this map as it's only 4 seconds away from the Star Wars. However, what kills it is its rate and speed, like in all other maps. So focus on its breaks and its cornering, because that's where you get your speed from. In other words, it can feel like an R24 except it's RWD and mid end. And it also, again, can lose downforce on certain corners when breaking, because of the little amount of downforce at the front. So, it can have some stuff over here. Again, throttle control, obviously, like every single other map, is the best way to create a great edge on this card. Else, it will just kill you because of the amount of undersear it actually gets due to the low gravity of. So, the best way to keep in control of it is steering control and again, throttle control. So, resuming, both throttle and steering control are important for a good run, focus on your cornering, it is one of the fastest cars on this map, it can understeer under too much throttle, it can also snap oversteer at low RPM, and the best way to keep the reps in this map is see it's 1000 to 7000 to avoid both understeer or oversteer. So, that's the best way I found to drive the anyone on those maps. If I ever get a better time, I'll update it. However, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye! There is also a Discord server link to this channel in the comments and in the description. So if you want to check that out, you can.